violence against us is not. They have no place in New Zealand. There is no place in New Zealand for such acts of extreme and unprecedented violence, which is, it is clear this act was. For now, my thoughts, and I'm sure the thoughts of all New Zealanders, are with those who have been affected and also with their families. My thoughts also to those in Christchurch who are still dealing with an unfolding situation. The advice from police continues to be that um, people remain indoors. I acknowledge uh, that that may mean that some families are separated, but please continue uh, to listen out for uh, information as it comes to light that's been directly provided by the New Zealand police with further information. But as I say, they please remain in lockdown. We are potentially still dealing with an evolving situation, again, as I say, across multiple sites. Please be assured, though, the police um, are actively managing the situation. Uh, Christchurch Hospital is dedicated uh, to treating those who are arriving at the hospital um, as we speak uh, as well. As soon as I leave here, I will be returning um, directly uh, on a, a King Air flight to Wellington. Agencies are already convening in Wellington. I will be looking to meet with them as soon as I land. It's my expectation that once I arrive and have been briefed, uh, I uh, intend uh, to speak again publicly after that point. I'm happy to take questions. Uh, look, it's only a matter of a few hours ago, of course, that I was um, uh, advised of the uh, situation and that it was an evolving situation. Uh, again, uh, public reporting took place not too long after events began unfolding. Um, but as to the precise details, um, at, at this stage I'll wait until I have uh, a bit more of uh, precision from a briefing um, directly from the police when I arrive in Wellington. At the moment, the police, uh, although they uh, have stated that they have one offender in custody, they have advised that there may be other offenders. Uh, they are dealing with multiple scenes as well, so I can confirm that. And I acknowledge that you aren't in a position to uh, confirm uh, deaths or injuries. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, that? No, I'm, I'm not currently in a position um, to confirm uh, the number of deaths or injuries, but I have to acknowledge people can see uh, images live from Christchurch. It will be obvious to them that this is a significant event uh, and I can tell you now this uh, is and will be one of New Zealand's darkest days. What do we know about the offender if anything? Is there any confirmation around age, ethnicity or even nationality? Uh, I'm not in a position to uh, give those details at this stage. Um, police, as I say, have um, apprehended someone. They are in custody as we speak, but I'm simply not in a position to give details uh, around that individual, um, that suspect at hand. And the uh, again, I'm, I'm not in a position to give any further detail about the individual that's currently in police custody. There, are, there is a potential for other suspects still out there. At, at this stage, the police are um, continuing to advise uh, those who are in the area to remain indoors. They have said that they could be dealing with other offenders. That's why they, of course, are taking the approach of ensuring people's safety. Uh, and so until uh, people hear otherwise, they ask that they listen to the advice that are being given directly by the New Zealand police. The nature of the crime, would you describe it as a hate crime? I would describe it as an unprecedented act of violence, an act that has absolutely no place in New Zealand. This is not who we are. Are you able to expand on why, any, any reason as to why it may have occurred? Is there any indication around that? Well, certainly um, it uh, has occurred in a place where people should have been expressing their religious freedom, where they should have been in a safe environment, uh, and they have not been today. Uh, there is no place in New Zealand for such extreme acts of unprecedented violence. Uh, the people who were um, uh, the subject of this attack today, New Zealand is their home. They should be safe here. The person who has perpetuated this violent act against them, uh, they have no place in New Zealand society. Any other questions? I'm quite keen to get to Wellington now, so if you'll excuse me, um, I'm very happy to update you again once I've um, uh, met with agencies uh, upon my landing. Thank you.
The Prime Minister there describing what's happened this afternoon in Christchurch as one of New Zealand's darkest days. That is the latest from the Prime Minister who is clearly unable or perhaps unwilling at this point to give too much more information. And uh, we have little to add to the information void at the moment because of uh, authorities in an active and, and evolving situation. Let's go to political editor Jessica Much Mackay at Parliament. Jess, the Prime Minister not able to give too much in the way of specifics. Yeah, we were expecting her to be able to give us an update on those fatalities and those injuries. She wasn't able to do that at this point. But some of the details that she was able to give to us is that there is one person in custody and police are expecting that others may be involved in that, but they are dealing with multiple scenes at the moment. So I think that's an interesting thing that's worth noting. She used very strong language, as we heard there. There, there is no place in New Zealand for extreme and, and unprecedented violence. This is not who we are. The Prime Minister stressing that the people here were going to perform their religious beliefs and they should have been safe, they should have been allowed to do that. Logistically, the Prime Minister is now jumping on a plane from New Plymouth. She's heading back here. Officials are already gathering here at the Beehive. She's getting a briefing as soon as she gets off the plane and she is expected to update us here on more information um, to hopefully be able to give us some of those, pic some of those specifics so that we we can paint a, a better picture of exactly what's going on here. And of course we'll bring that to viewers as soon as that becomes available as well. Yes, the Prime Minister calling it one of New Zealand's darkest days. This situation still evolving across multiple sites. And that adds to Mike Bush, the police commissioner's comments that Muslims across the country should not attend mosques this evening, which indicates of course the, the breadth and potential severity of the situation, that this is not necessarily a lone incident, that there, there are fears clearly of secondary incidents. All right, Jess, thank you very much for that. Um, police, we have, can confirm that one person is in custody. Police are clearly still uncertain and tense. We've seen raised guns at police cordons simply, by, uh, simply out of fear of approaching vehicles. And we've seen policemen with guns going from car to car trying to establish that the area is safe. There is clearly a lack of certainty around the wider potential here. A short time ago, our team spoke to a witness, a courier driver, Dan. Here's what he said. Courier driver, I was doing a pickup and uh, we heard, a, a, you know, like a bang, bang. We, I originally thought it was a car backfiring, but then they, the, the, you know, the, the bangs became louder and more frequent. So we thought, well, that can't be a car backfiring. So we thought it was a nail gun and then there was more and more and more of them. Um, so we, we then, I walked to the end of the street, uh, to the end of the row. Um, to the, the curbside where I came like came within uh, spitting distance of a man carrying a shotgun spraying bullets at a car um, going down Limwood Ave um, yelling and swearing at them um, and then uh, I, the, the guy walked away um, and I showed the cops where the gunman was uh, that was uh, shooting on the street um, and yeah, like now we're just all in lockdown and we, we can't, can't do anything. A major shooting in Christchurch, that was a witness courier driver called Dan. And of course the incident has been seen an example of what the security analyst Paul Buchanan called white supremacist attacking the Islamic community. Earlier we spoke to Anjum Rahman from the Islamic Women's Council and she says their community have received threats before but nothing specific. Yes, so Friday is our day of congregational prayer. Um, Masjid al Noor is the biggest mosque in Christchurch and it was, um, you know, when it was built, it was the southernmost mosque in the world. Um, it, it is um, one of the older mosques in New Zealand and um, it would easily get 500 people every week for our Friday prayers. So someone that was wanting to inflict damage, clearly they know that that's the time to go and, and cause. I don't have information around that. Um, I can't, I'm not willing to try and make up any assumptions or so on. Um, I can just tell you the facts as I know them. Do you have friends and family members there, Anshan? 
in Christchurch, definitely. We have friends with the Muslim community in um, New Zealand. You know, we tend to know at least some people from communities across the country. I myself, you know, came to New Zealand in 1972 and, you know, when the community was a lot smaller then. And so we, at that time, used to know people across various cities. And so, yes, I'm just desperately hoping that the damage is minimal and that people will be okay. That's Anjum Rahman the, uh, from the Islamic Women's Council. Of course, our thoughts go to the Islamic community over at the moment with the fears and uncertainty and casualties that they're experiencing. We have some vision come in of an arrest this afternoon. Here's what we've got. Have a look at this. There's no sound to this, but uh, this is the first time I'm seeing it as well. Uh, clearly a car looks, it appears, has been driven off the road by a police vehicle and the arrest taking place. Images blurred at the moment to, uh, uh, for legal reasons. Police officers running down the street, as you can see, ease, happily, well not happily, that's a very poor choice of words, but readily prepared to use their guns, guns on display, guns raised. We've seen all through this afternoon that scenario applying right throughout Christchurch, in uh, particular around the cordoned off area, where Mike Thorpe joins us from now, and he's outside the hospital. Mike. Yes, yeah, Simon, still uh, very little to report from here in terms of activity. Uh, we are still in lockdown, both at the uh, Christchurch Hospital behind me and the outpatients uh, behind the camera. Um, there are people in the windows looking out, uh, probably wondering just as much as anyone else what's going on here. The, those who were gathered here this afternoon um, have dispersed. It's quieter than ever before. There's still no ambulance that has uh, turned up at the scene, but still no policemen that have left uh, where they were in position here at Christchurch Hospital this afternoon. So still very little to report. Thank you, Mike. It appears the breadth of uncertainty is quite extreme. There is nothing developing, nothing new is happening anywhere. The guns still remain poised. People are worried and the, the uh, police commissioner is talking about mosques all over the country that, that worshippers should not attend them. Yet at the moment, no activity there, which, is, which has got to be positive. We'll take what we can for the time being. Is there any word from anybody there? Is anybody telling anybody anything? All I've heard this afternoon is we are in lockdown, you cannot come in. And that's been told to those who have tried to access Christchurch Hospital, obviously to, to see uh, those inside, not necessarily related with uh, today's events, but it's under very, very strict control at the moment. It's, it's almost unnerving itself that, it's, uh, that it is so quiet. CDHB have been unable to confirm with us just yet the number that have been brought here to hospital uh, or the status of those who have been brought here. So we are waiting to hear from then. All right, Mike, thanks for that. And we heard earlier, of course, the CDHB say that, um, yes, as you reported, it, it does remain in lockdown. They're still using the same language as the police, that this is an evolving situation. We understand schools across Christchurch still remain in lockdown as well. Are you seeing any sense of agitation over this void of information? Not yet. It's still just that air of tension. And as I say, I, I can see people in the windows uh, of the outpatients behind the camera, and it's that same look that they had an hour ago. Not so much agitation, even though they're not allowed out. They just want to know what's going on. So it's that it's it's more tension than it is anything else. We've had a few people uh, come up to us and ask us what's going on, and we can only tell them what we're telling you. Yeah, Mike. All right. Thanks very much for that. We heard from the Prime Minister, of course, about uh, less than 20 minutes ago, and she said that. Uh, she reiterated basically what we've said, that there isn't a lot of information available, that she did call it though one of New Zealand's darkest days, that people should be allowed to go about their business, particularly of prayer and worship, and this is not the way of our country. We heard, um, look, we'll let you go, Mike, and see if you can grab some more information for us. We also heard from security analyst Paul Buchanan earlier, telling us that uh, White supremacists were in action in Christchurch. He was prepared to name the individual who we believe has been arrested. We're not going to just do that just yet. Right now we have, uh, well, timely, of course, because we understand the schools are still in lockdown. Fetu Cormac from the Principals Federation, he joins us on the phone now. Fetu, kia ora, thank you for joining kia ora. us. What, what can you tell us? 
Um, speaking to education officials, we understand that all of our schools are in lockdown and we are confident now that Farno and parents should be assured that their teachers and school principals will be taking care of their young ones until the situation is resolved. So your advice to, to, to parents is simply to stay home and, and watch the television? Um, I, I believe that is a, a, a good information for our parents that they should stay home and wait until police and also whether the schools will be in touch with them. There'll be some communication, I'm sure, through schools. Um, so just to reassure our families is that all of the schools in Christchurch will have lockdown procedures and policies in place and they would have practiced, practiced these in the past and that they can feel confident that their teachers will be looking after their children for them. What information have you directly received from authorities? Um, the information that I have is that our local uh, regional um, school leaders have been in touch with the Ministry of Education to assure them that everybody is safe and Ministry officials have been directly in touch with me as well. When were you last in contact with them? Um, around about uh, 15 or 20 minutes ago. And you are getting regular updates? Um, I'm sure I'll be in touch with um, the Ministry of Education. Um, I've spoken to the Secretary of Education, and so I'm sure those um, conversations will continue as this unfolds. So um, just to reassure our families and all parents that their teachers and principals will be taking care of their children. The procedures are well established. Indeed. Have you received any information as to speculation when this might be resolved or when lockdown might be lifted? Um, I can't give any of that information. Obviously, that would be information that we'd need to seek from the police and those authorities. All right. What happens now for the schools, though? Well, schools will be waiting to hear from the police, of course, about what their next steps are. And there, will, and there is active and detailed communication happening between the Ministry of Education and I'm sure the police and then in turn, turn to our school leaders. You've told, the if, yeah, sorry, thank you. Sorry, Fede. You've told us that um, the lockdown procedures are well established. Can you, can you talk us through what happens? Um, over a number of years now, um, schools have... Um, brought in, in, um, into place these policies and in my own school in South Dunedin these are regularly practiced and so the children will be fully aware of how they should react when the lockdown occurs and obviously every school would have its own procedures in place and policies but I'm confident that um, since the new health and safety regulations came in some years ago that all schools will have procedures in place and that our young people will be safe. Well, I'm sure your school's procedure is similar to others. Can you talk us through exactly how, how it happens? As principal, you receive sure. information directly from the Ministry of Education, do you? 